Hey everyone, welcome back to Sweet Yellow House. I've been gone for a minute, but now I'm back and we have some really great projects today. And now's a good time if you haven't subscribed, please do, and you can catch us on all of our social media there. This is our website and anything that you see that we've made, um, you can find there available for sale. So let's start off with project one. And this is a recipe card holder or a shelf sitter. I got this from the dollar spot, I believe at Target and I am going to start off with some molds from IOD, the Fleur de Lis and um, as usual you're going to cover that mold with some cornstarch or I think I used some arrowroot powder because that's what I had so I'm just going to make the little um, rooster here that's in this mold and I'm going to actually uh, put that into the freezer because I was having trouble um, unmolding it and not messing up the little feet and stuff on that because that was pretty tender so I'm going to grab the olive crest mold and this is actually from IOD as well and I am going to um, dust the elements that I want from that and using my clay I'm going to make those and I do believe I put this one into the freezer as well because um, it's also very delicate. I grabbed all of my trimmings uh, molds. I used one, two, and three. I actually used uh, all of them and on a different project that's coming up later. But I made a trimmings mold and then I trimmed the bottom of that. And using my tight bond as usual, then I started to glue those elements on. I wanted this to look really kind of like a rustic you know sign and stuff so I was trying to cover up all of the um, the rough kind of like really straight uh, edges on all of this to kind of tr try to help disguise that it was like a little chalkboard and stuff so once I got um, those put down where I wanted I did use some painters tape and just kind of glued the um, tape those in place to keep them uh, right where I wanted them while the glue was drying I really like putting all of like different elements of the of different molds together. I just think that IOD does a really great job that even though they're all very separate styles, they somehow really mash up together. So you're able to kind of bring that all together and make a really nice display on anything that you're using them on. So I glued everything down and I'm going to let that sit overnight to dry and I'm not really worried about the glue that's you know kind of left around because I am going to cover this up so I grabbed some apothecary in the DIY and I'm going to use that to um, start painting on this and I'm going to use this straight uh, paint and the reason why I do this uh, I do add some water to it just to kind of thin it out because it was uh, pretty thick it's uh, like an older jar so I added some water to this and then I'm going to go over the um, I'm gonna go over the project and the reason why I'm go going to um, do this first is because I don't want to add uh, the baking soda in yet and then you know kind of cover over and fill in all of the details that are in the the molds so this actually will give me good coverage for the first layer and then in my second layer I add the baking soda and this is well where I start um, adding some texture to it normally that's what I do for that because um, I don't want to cover up all the detail I want to get good like paint coverage and then that way I can add the baking soda in areas that I want and not have to worry about getting that color in places so I'm using the thicker paint to Kind of fill in the gaps and hide that texture from the glue um, that's on there but I don't really have to worry about it because overall it just adds to the look of it 
I'm using my glue, my heat gun to kind of dry that faster and this is just so I can move on to the next steps and I don't have to wait uh, for it to dry so I did uh, the texture um, front and back to make sure everything was covered the next item that I'm going to grab is the DIY uh, white wax and I'm just going to go over all of this just hitting those details normally what I do is I actually do like half and half I'll do like half white and half clear wax and stuff but I just went in with all the white and because I wanted to bring that color back a little bit and not have it uh, you know so new or so bright looking I worked that in really well with this little wax brush I'm not even sure where I got it I've had it forever so and I use it when I want to clean it out I just kind of wash it out with some soapy water and then let it dry after I got that all pushed in with the paper towel I'm gonna grab the um, the dark wax from DIY as well and I'm gonna I grab a little small uh, a smaller brush and I am going around the details of those moles just to kind of add a shadow effect on there. So uh, I'm using a really light hand. I'm just going around and adding shadow and then I'm just kind of using that to buff everything out. I grabbed this Jolie finishing wax. It's a clear wax. Normally I use DIY but this is what I had on hand. I ran out of my, um, my, my DIY clear wax. So I'm just putting that and I'm going to use that to kind of buff out that dark wax and and kind of blend everything together this will also help kind of seal that paint in and give it um, a really finished look and, and a protective layer as well once I have that all buffed out where I want I grab my uh, gold gilding wax and I'm just using my finger and I'm going over those details in the um, in the molds on the molds <clears throat> I wanted this to either be a versatile type of little shelf sitter so I'm just going to glue on this clip on the back of it that way if I wanted to use it to hang a picture or a recipe or something like that then I could do that I thought this came out really cute considering this was only like a one dollar item and, and you know it, it's definitely a level up and I think it came out really really cute and I'm I would love to have this sitting in my kitchen project two are some um, they're coasters but they have like a place where you could put pictures in them so they're very modern not something that I would really use in my home so I decided to make little uh, picture frames out of them and so I grabbed the IOD trimmings molds one two and three and I'm just gonna make uh, random castings from these just so that using my paper clay and uh, for every one I have a set I have two sets so there's eight in all and I'm gonna cover one cover every one of them differently so that way they they all look different but you know it's a set so but if you wanted to break them up and sell them individually or use them as a set or give them as a set as a gift then you can still do that so I just go around the edges and I'm just uh, cornering those as you see there making sure that they're buttoned up against each other and then I use my tie bond to glue those into place I used a variety of all of um, the uh, the trimmings, whether they they were thin or fat, and then that way the uh, frame openings, you know, were all different sizes. I just thought that it added a, a nice variety and selection to these little to these little coasters. I also grabbed uh, some other 
IOD molds because I wanted to then start adding um, the uh, some different elements on top of the borders. I grabbed the new Dewdrop Pond and IOD uh, Toadstool and I go to a local vendor and her uh, name is Deanna and she's out of Vintage Holes in Modesto. So if you're looking for some IOD products, she also sells fusion and DIY paint. She's an adorable woman, very helpful, always so gracious and just um you know just loves to share and chat about projects and stuff so if you're in the area go over there uh, look her up and support your local vendors so so after making different elements that i wanted i began to glue uh, those on as well and i actually just glued those on over the little um trimmings mold the frames on the outside of that and again I use my type on to glue those on after I let those dry overnight I needed to fill in a lot of those cracks um, it just seemed like they cracked a lot I don't know if it was because it was sitting on glass or maybe it was the weather I don't know but I put my type on into a syringe and I use that to fill in the cracks I believe I went over the cracks twice so I went through them covered them let it dry and then I went back a second time and filled it in again just because some of those were really deep and as you can see here they uh, you know evened out and became um, pretty seamless and I just think it looks better it gives it a finishing look so I grabbed the apothecary again and this time I went ahead and put some baking soda in that and just started out with that because I wanted a lot of texture with these. I didn't worry about filling in the, um, the glass in the center because I wasn't quite sure at this point if I was going to put a picture in it or just paint over it. But I decided that I was going to go with the picture and then so when the paint dried I just got a scraper and I just scraped that off the glass which was really simple. Again I grabbed the DIY wax, uh, white wax and I believe this time yeah, I mixed it with the, um, the Jolie Clear uh, and I just went over um, all of that and blended it all out and um, you know sealed it up. I really like the way that the toadstool with the mushrooms uh, came out. I just thought that they came out super cute. I was just really impressed with that mold and how uh, detailed it was. Once the wax was settled and a little bit dry, then I just grabbed the gold gilding wax and I just, again, using my finger, just went over um, the details and that to bring out the details. So they had like little bumpers on the back of um, on the back of them, and so I decided that I was gonna remove those. So I use, using my heat gun, I removed them, and then on four of them, I glued uh, some magnets onto them because I wanted to use them for um, fridge fridge magnets or something. Um, and that's how those came out. So I, I glued a magnet on each corner because they were fairly heavy with the, them being glass and then adding all the clay and stuff to them. They were a little bit heavy. So I decided to add four of the uh, magnets for that support. On the other four, I decided that I wanted to make them some ornaments uh, <clears throat> as a different, you know, uh, variation of these. So. I grabbed some felt and I just cut some um, squares to go on the back. I have some velvet ribbon here. I just tied a little knot at the top. I'm going to glue that down and then glue the felt over that to kind of hide that. The very top of that I left open and this was so that I could slide pictures in there or take, you know, slide pictures in and out of there and that it wasn't permanently sealed. Be gentle. No, I just gotta know if you're gonna leave me, then just do it. 
And I'm just using my Gorilla Glue gun and the Gorilla Glue sticks for this. So once I have that ribbon um, glued down there, then again, I'm just adding that felt, but I'm not gluing the top of that um, just so that I can get those pictures in and out. And you can see there it's open. I just trim any excess that's hanging over and that's it for that. Said this is something you would never do Here we are in a car Let me say who you are I just really thought that these came out really nice um, uh, From coasters to, you know, them being something really ornate and beautiful So just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed, please do It really helps my channel out and I just appreciate it so much Project 3 is a French country inspired wall decor. I found uh, these this set of four uh, little frames, pictures, they have flowers in them. I'm going to be using two uh, just, just for this particular project. I'm starting out by uh, taking off the hanger on the back and I'm using an X-Acto knife to uh, remove the um, picture. The, paper that um, kind of seals the back of it so I'm just cutting that out nicely because I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that again or not and then I'm using some pliers and a little um, tool to remove all of the 5,000 staples that were in there for such a small picture I can't believe there was that many staples so I removed the frame from the picture and I am going to use this transfer um, from IOD and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up the mats on, on these um, with the transfer and these are just um, I'm just kind of fitting them on there and seeing if I need if I can fit them all on one, one page which I can. I'm going to use my scissors to cut that down to the size I need, um, which is fairly easy because these all have um, grid lines on them, so it makes it really simple to cut a straight line. I'm not going to worry about cutting out the center. I'm just worrying about making sure that it covers uh, the mat, um, the center part. I'm not uh, worried about trying to cut that out. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm just going to fit that over the top and using a transfer stick, I'm going to start transferring that to the mat. I just do the outside of the mat and I don't rub or anything um, on the center because there's nothing there. And I'm using my X-Acto knife and lifting it and just kind of cutting that, anything that's you know coming off uh, with that I'm just kind of cutting it so it has a, a nice clean edge and um, anything that's extra there I just use my exacto knife and kind of scrape off what I don't want or need I had got some watercolor paper and I'm gonna cut that to uh, fit this this uh, the inside of that I'm measuring it here so I can cut the same size and grabbing my paper cutter, I'm then going to cut uh, the size that I need. I'm going to cut two of those because I'm working with two frames here. And simple enough, making sure it fits on the inside. I'm using the new IOD uh, stamp set here. The um, I'm not even sure the La Campania. I, I've heard it pronounced so many different ways, I don't know. But I cut my my stamps out. Uh, you don't have to. You can just remove it. And again, I got that from Deanna at Vintage Holes, uh, which is in Modesto, California. Um, and I'm going to use my IOD ink, and I'm going to ink those up, and I'm going to stamp that uh, watercolor paper. Now. On the watercolor paper, you will have a side that is uh, more rough than the other side. I tried stamping on the rough side, and it almost like it's like it it soaked up the ink, and then started to kind of uh, uh, I don't know, like not smear, but it kind of fuzzied out the edges. So I turned it over and I stamped on the more smoother side and that worked well. Everything stayed where it was going to stay. 
So I used uh, two different stamps and here I was kind of missing a little section so I just re-inked and I lined up and um, it was simple to do and I was able to clean that up. So now that I have everything kind of ready to be put together, so you could see there it was stamped on the other side. Like I said, it, it just looked blurry, so I just wanted to re-stamp it. I'm using my, um, my tape gun here, and I'm just adding some tape to that, and I'm going to tape it down in place, just right over where that other picture was, so it was easy to line up. Now I'm just using the tape uh, gun runner and I'm taping the back of that uh, mat and I'm just going to press that down into place as well. I wanted to kind of add a little bit of glimmer to these because even though they were beautiful I just felt like they needed a little jewel so I'm taking a really small paintbrush and I'm grabbing that uh, gilding wax and I'm just going over that little inner border with the gilding wax and it added like just a little a little glimmer of shine which really set it off so I have this liquid patina um, goal is called DIY uh, golden ticket from DIY and I'm going to use that to paint the frames and this was actually um, you know some goals are different tones but this uh, the DIY uh, gold ticket and the gold uh, gilding wax uh, really matched well so I was able to um, paint the frame and then uh, have it match match up really good. So I was super happy with the I think these just came out so adorable I was I was super impressed with the way they came out. So Project 4 French farm animal wall plaque. I got these from the dollar store and um, I grabbed two of them and I'm gonna start out removing the tags and I'm gonna stain these this stain is uh, really easy to use um, and it, it soaked it up really well. I will say that if you are going to use this, make sure you're in a ventilated area because it stinks a lot um, and my, my family was complaining. So I, I did front and back and I let that dry and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to do two coats with the big top. Uh, and the reason why I did this is because I am going to do, um, I was planning on doing some transfers on this and I didn't think that the transfers, the transfer would not stick to the wood with the, with the, um, with the stain. So that's why I sealed it. But after I got done with that, I wanted, I realized I wanted to do something different. So I grabbed. I'm going to use my IOD um, ink and the La Campagna stamp set again. I'm going to grab the flower elements out of that and use that to stamp um, these wood plaques. Don't forget when you're using these stamps for the first time you want to sand them and you'll see me do that here. Uh, so that that gives a little bit tooth to your stamp and that way it's able to pick up that ink and it's not kind of like if you don't do that sometimes it will like bubble up on there or kind of not stick to the stamp and um, you know you won't get even even stamping so you can see here I put it down I hold it with one hand and then I'm just moving my other hand around to make sure everything's uh, gets pressed down. Now I'm going to add some other uh, elements just around the border where there's um, kind of some free space because I want this all to be covered. So I'm just picking out parts of that stamp that I like and then re-inking and stamping that. So I place those aside to dry and I'm going to use this resin and this is the 15 minute setup um, faster than um, a speeding bullet resin and I'm going to use the um, farm animal um, IOD 
uh, molds and, and I the reason why I went ahead and used this resin is because these molds are bigger and I don't have to try to get them into really fine areas uh, so it was easy for me to use if I had something really fine I would have used one that had to set up overnight so I made a set and I went ahead and used that resin popped those out and started to kind of figure out the design that I wanted to uh, make with these. I wanted to add some other elements to that, so I grabbed some other molds, but I wanted to show you that I use these little silicone plastic, uh, silicone cupcake liners, and the reason I like these is because you can then just peel this resin out. You're not throwing a bunch of containers into the trash, and these are reusable. These are also really great to use with paint especially the DIY paint because that paint you can always once it's dry add more water to it and you know reuse it because it starts to turn back into paint so I just grab that little cupcake holder and I mush it around and crack all the paint off and then I just throw it right back into my DIY uh, you know whatever color it goes with and then you know you you can reuse it so you're not throwing away a bunch of containers and you're able to um you know reuse these and not have a bunch of waste and trash and stuff so once i started uh i grabbed some 50 50 and um with sealer and water and i'm sealing those plaques and now i'm moving back over to my molds after i have poured and figured out my design and i'm taking the gilding wax I started out with my finger and went over them just for fast coverage and then I grabbed a little brush and I'm going into the finer details. These have really fine details. It's like so it's really hard to get that um, filled with your fingers so a small brush will really help you do that. The great thing about this wax is that once it's dry, it's dry. I grab my DIY dark wax and I'm just going to go over it very lightly with my finger and this is just to antique it a little bit. Once I get those covered as much as I want, I'm going to grab my tie bond and I'm going to glue those down. I have a small brush here and I'm just kind of uh, cleaning off that glue that's kind of seeping out the sides of that just to keep it clean. I have some jute uh, twine rope here and I have some little ringlets and I'm going to put those in the pole and that way I have something to put that twine through to hang. These plaques I was really happy with. I thought they came out really cute and then them just to be able to be hung and you know hang them in a row or hang them individually. I just thought they came out really cute. And this is how they look here. This is such a great project because you can make any kind of mold and put on the front. It doesn't necessarily have to be these. It could be anything and these are really great plaques to add any kind of you know a uh, nice decoration to the kitchen, to the bathroom, or where, or even a desk or something like that. So, project five is a deli kitchen sign, is what I call it. I have this sign from several years ago, and it had a wreath on it, and it's a little dated. A lot of people are still, you know, have them in their home, but it was just a little dated and kind of out of my. Um, decorating um, liking I guess so I just thought that I would use it and do something else with it so I grabbed the early um, American stain um, but before I did that I used my 
sanding um, my sander and I just took off all of that detail from the wreath and stuff on there. I sanded it back down to really the bare wood and then using the stain I went over everything. This project, even though it looks really intense, it was a very simple project. This sign was uh, really simple to use. I mean, you just sanded it down and then restained it. Uh, once the stain was dry, I used Big Top mixed with some water, and I'm gonna seal that. Um, I'm gonna seal that stain in and the reason I'm gonna seal it in is because transfers will not stick to wood like this that sometimes has a, a stain or something so once that stains dry like I said I'm gonna seal it with two good coats and I'm gonna let them dry between each coat I grabbed the iron orchid uh, transfer set here um, this is the one that I'm using you don't have to use this one <laughs> Um, this is purely for inspiration and idea. So I grabbed this one and I'm going to kind of put it together to see uh, where I want it on the board uh, and get it all lined up. And then I'm going to start um, putting down my transfer. I did test it first to make sure that it, it was going to stick to this before I started. That way um, I made sure I had a really good seal on it. So. I started out at one corner and went to the next. I will say this took a while. <laughs> so be prepared. If you're going to do something this big, it's going to take you a while to get that transfer down. So even if you do it a little at a time and go back to it, you're definitely going to spend some time on it. So I got all this lined up and uh made sure that everything was put down i wasn't missing anything i didn't just rip the pages off i lifted made sure nothing was coming off and then laid it down and um uh, you know um rubbed it again to make sure i wasn't missing anything after i got everything in place i got a small tool and i just made sure that i cut those lines in um so that um they wouldn't be sitting on top and snag on anything once the transfer was down, I went in again with the um, the big top, uh, just right, and I put it in a squeeze bottle, easy to use, and uh, did several coats. I believe I put two coats on that, just making sure that everything was sealed um, there and dry. So. Thanks again for watching and spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it. I am very excited to get back into the swing of things. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. That way you can be alerted when we uh, upload all of our new videos. And please go over to my website and check out the projects and items that you might want to be, have for sale there. So thank you again and we'll see you next time. Need someone to save me.